One of the basic goals of a geological investigation is to establish the relationship between different stratigraphic units. In this video, we're going to look at the use of a steering net to analyse the orientation of planes. And in particular, to find the mean orientation of a set of planes. Now, a common reason for doing this might be to compare bedding readings between different sedimentary units to see, for example, if those units are conformable or unconformable with respect to each other. So the first thing we need to do is to compile up some bedding readings from a field map. So let's do this working through one set of beds from a particular unit, one unit at a time. So we need to look at the field map in a bit of detail. I find it useful to colour code these as we go, one unit at a time. So let's collect the data for the more western unit on here. So here's the data compiled for the first unit, and we've got, what, 14 bedding readings from it. The way that I've measured this and recorded it on my field map is that the dip direction is always clockwise of the strike, and we can use that information to quickly plot the steering net now. So let's have a go. Probably the best way to do that is if you come round and view this from my side um, so that you can see how I'm plotting the steering net. So come round over here. So here's our list of data with the strike and the dip for unit one and uh, we've got the stereo set up with the north arrow marked up so we know we're ready to go. So let's now plot on these um, bedding orientations and we're going to do this as poles. So let's find the strike of 080 there and we're going to spin this around so it's up like this. There we go and uh, the dip is 04, so if we were to plot this as a great circle, the arc would come round like this. But the pole to this bedding reading is going to go down steeply, down like this. It plots there. So that's our first piece of data on here with the pole to the bedding reading of 08004. Now we do the same with the next one, 07806. Pop it around like this and pop this one on, look at that, it's right next door, 06 is there. Okay, so now let's continue and plot the rest of the data onto our stereo net. Find the 07804, spin that around just so we can get it all back again. And we can see that our poles to bedding make this rather tight cluster quite close to the pin on the stereo net. So that's unit one plotted. So that's a really tight little cluster, isn't it? So now what we're going to do is compile the data for the next unit, which I'll call unit two, rather unimaginatively. And we'll then plot that on a new piece of tracing paper. So let's compile up some uh, bedding readings for this uh, unit two. Again, I'll use a different color so we don't get them confused. And again, we can use that color when we come to do the plotting. So let's compile up the data for unit two. So there we've got the data for unit two. So that's what, two, four, six, eight, ten bedding readings for unit two. So now we're going to take these onto a new piece of tracing paper that we can use to do our plotting. So again, let's see how this plots up. Again, we'll plot these as poles. So first one there is 04012, 10, 20, 30, 40, 040, 12 is a pole, plots there. Okay, spin back round again, let's plot the next one on. 05612, so that's 56 is there. 05612 pops it there. 
Okay, again, let's just go back and we'll plot the remaining eight data points onto here. And 012, 12. So let's pop this back. And there's our cluster for unit two. So we've got another tight cluster for our poles to bedding, this time for unit two. What we can do now is compare this cluster for unit two with the one we generated previously for unit one. And we'll just overlay unit one onto the plot. They're clearly distinct populations. That means that the bedding in unit one is discordant to that in unit two. What's more, it's more gently dipping. So we have a relationship. So there's unit one and unit two is systematically dipping more steeply at around what 12 degrees towards the southeast compared to that in unit one. So we have an angular discordance, an unconformity that we can pick out by plotting the data like this. So now let's go back to our field map and look at another unit, which we'll call unit three. This rests on top of unit two. And again, we want to establish whether it is conformable or unconformable with respect to unit two. And we'll do this again by plotting poles to bedding and making the comparison. So let's pull off some bedding data from the map for unit three. So I'll use a green pen this time, unit three. Okay, so there's our compiled data. We'll get some new tracing paper and plot these up in their own right on the stereo net. Okay, so here's our data for unit three, 046, 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, six. Spin this around. Puts it there. It's our first piece of data. Okay, again, let's plot the rest up uh, quickly onto here. Finally, 04012. So there's our cluster for unit three. So how does that compare with unit two? Well, all we need to do is take our plot for unit two and lie it on top, making sure our north arrows line up. And the data sit on top of each other. So as far as we can judge from the bedding readings within unit two and unit three, they're parallel to one another. They're the same orientation. Consequently, if we now go back and put, I'll just take unit two off. Put unit one on top of unit three for comparison. Again, we can see they're different. So again, unit three, is not in the same orientation as unit one because unit three is in the same orientation as unit two and in turn unit two was discordant with respect to unit one. So our patterns make sense. Well, actually we can do a bit more than this now. Having compared our different clusters, our different populations of bedding readings, we can take each of these in turn and use the cluster to estimate the mean orientation of bedding for that particular group of bedding readings. So if we see our collection of dots in here, they form this tight cluster. All we need to do is to work out, or just estimate, where the center of mass of that little collection of points is. And I would just say, it's there. X marks the spot. So all we need to do is to spin this X onto this um, line through here, which runs through the pin. And we can see that it sits there, what about? 12 degrees, so the orientation as a bedding of 12, as a dip, and that is its strike, which is a bearing of 
10, 20, 30, 0, 3, 4 is the orientation then of the average bedding in unit 3. And if we wanted to, of course, we could plot that at a great circle. So let's go back up to here, plonk it in here. 12 is there as the great circle. So this is how the bedding plots at a great circle that has as its pole the mean of our cluster in here. Quite tricky to draw this without getting in front of the camera. Oops, there we go. So there is our great circle for that pole that we've calculated with that mean orientation. And we do the same with the other data, should we choose to. So that's a really quick illustration of how we can use a stereographic projection, plotting bedding readings to compare different populations derived from different stratigraphic units with a view of establishing whether a sequence is conformable or unconformable. Now, of course, there are a couple of provisos here. The first one is that we are assuming, of course, that the bedding within a geological formation is parallel to the geological boundaries between those formations. And, of course, we could check that by drawing structure contours on those boundaries uh, from our field map. The second one is we're assuming that the spatial distribution uh, relates to the stratigraphic organisation rather than, for example, a fold structure. And again, by mapping different areas and finding um, a greater set of geological relationships on the map, we can confirm or deny um, that possible alternative explanation. But the way we analyse is still the same. So a quick illustration of the use of stereonets to understand stratigraphic relationships derived from field mapping. So why not have a go at using this technique with the data you collect when you're conducting fieldwork? 